Hi, this is Dan Rourke from Distance Learning Recording Arts at Manhattan School of Music. And this video is going to be about advanced audio settings in Zoom. More specifically, it's going to be about how to get the best audio you can for music lessons. First, I'm going to talk about internet settings. One of the most important aspects of distance learning is making sure that you have a good, stable internet connection. Then I'm going to go through the Zoom settings and show you how to enable a few settings in there that are really important for getting good audio quality for music lessons out of Zoom. And then we're going to get into the hardware section of this video where I'm going to discuss USB microphones, Zoom interfaces, and multi-channel interfaces. All right, so the first thing and maybe one of the most important aspects of distance learning is making sure that you have a good internet connection. So what you're going to want to do, if you are able to, is hook up directly to your router. You're going to want to try and avoid Wi-Fi if possible. What you're going to need to do is first get yourself a Cat6 cable. And here's one I found on Amazon. It's 100 feet. It lies flat, nice and cheap. Second thing you're going to want to do is most of you are probably not going to have an Ethernet port or an RJ45 port on your computer. So you're going to need to get an adapter that's going to convert that port to a Thunderbolt or USB-C or USB-A. So here are some options here on Amazon. You can see they're also relatively affordable. What you're going to need to do, is plug one end of the Ethernet cable into the LAN ports on your router like this and then plug the other end into your adapter. Of course, that goes to your computer. Once that's done, you should be able to make sure that you're actually getting an internet connection by going into your network settings. You can do that on a Mac by coming up here to the Wi-Fi icon, clicking on your Wi-Fi icon, and scrolling down to open network preferences. When your network options open, you can see here on the side that I'm connected to Wi-Fi, but I also have this other ethernet connection. My Thunderbolt adapter is connected to the internet. So now I know that I'm connected to the internet. One of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm actually going to turn my Wi-Fi off. That way my computer is only going to use that hardwired ethernet connection for internet. All right, so let's get started here on the advanced preferences in Zoom. What you're going to want to do is launch Zoom. And I'm going to come up here to the top. I'm going to find my preferences. This is going to launch the general settings page. And I can navigate to the audio tab. Now in here, what you can see is you can see what your built-in output is, and you can see what microphone Zoom is using. For now, I'm gonna assume that we have no external hardware. So you're just using the built-in output of your speakers, and you're just using the built-in microphone of your laptop. The sound quality from the built-in microphone of a laptop can be suspect, but we're gonna change some settings here to hopefully make it a little better when you're having a lesson. The first audio setting I want you to check is down here. Make sure that enable stereo is checked. Otherwise, Zoom will automatically work in mono and only mono. So that has to be enabled. We've set this at an account-wide level, so everyone at MSM should have this automatically enabled by default. But just double check and make sure that that's checked. Next, you want to go into the advanced options. And you can do that by clicking down here in the bottom right on advanced. On this page, what you can see is you have a section on audio processing. This audio processing is designed around speech. And so you can see things like suppressing background noise, intermittent background noise and echo cancellation, and they're all set to auto. It's fine to leave these to auto. Just know that this processing is set by default and that it works very well for speech, but is terrible for music. And so we wanna be able to bypass this if we're playing music or trying to have a lesson. And we can do that up here. You'll see a check mark for show in meeting option to enable original sound from microphone. And that's basically just a way of saying Show in meeting option to shut off all this audio processing. So I'm going to check that, make sure that that in meeting option is there. And that's all I need to do in my audio settings. So here we are back at our meeting. And because I turned on that enable original sound, up here in the top left corner, I have this button to turn on original sound. And so I can click on that. And now it's going to bypass all of that voice processing. And this is probably the best setting to use for music lessons Again, if I'm just talking or giving a class, you could probably turn off original sound because some of that voice processing is going to help you cut out some background noise. Now we're going to get into the hardware part of this video, and we're going to start with the USB microphones. I like USB microphones a lot because they're going to be very easy to set up. They work great in Zoom, and if you're looking for a quick all-in-one solution to make your audio sound better, USB microphones are by far the way to go. This is an example of one that's very popular, which is called the Blue Yeti, and it's actually the microphone that I'm speaking into right at the moment. The Blue Yeti USB microphone hooks up to your laptop over USB mini, 
So you might need to get a USB mini to USB A or C, depending on what your computer has for connections. If you want to use the Blue Yeti or any USB microphone that you have during a meeting, it's very easy to set up. I'm here at my home desktop application and I can go to the top left. And again, I'm going to my audio preferences. So I'm going to select preferences. I'm going to find that audio tab and then where it says microphone, I'm going to hit the drop down here and I'm going to select the blue USB microphone. And that's it. All right. And here I am. I am using the blue Yeti microphone right now, as you can see. And I've actually got this pop filter in front of it. So that way the plosives, the air that comes out of your mouth when you speak sometimes doesn't actually hit the capsule of the microphone and make a lot of noise. You can see on the back, one of the features of this microphone is that it has switchable polar patterns. So right now what I'm in is I'm in a shape called cardioid and that's going to pick up sound from the front of the microphone, but it's going to reject from the rear. It also has a figure eight and an omnidirectional. But I think most importantly, it also has a stereo setting. And so I can switch this microphone to stereo by simply moving that dial over. And now we're in stereo and you're going to hear a difference in the sound of the microphone. If I come over here or if I come over this way, you should be able to hear it moving your headphones and things like that. I do recommend stereo if you are a classical musician and you're using this microphone for musical reasons. So I can get back here, I can step away from the microphone, move a little bit, and it's going to give a more natural sound than a single directional microphone might. However, if you're up close, I definitely recommend keeping it in cardio and keeping that directional microphone. Also, depending on how much noise is present in your room, as right now, maybe as a good example, you might be able to hear sirens in the background as I'm talking, the stereo is going to pick up a lot more background and room noise than directional settings such as cardioid. All right, we're going to get into the next part of this video, which is about the Zoom H1N. This is an awesome choice, I think, for classical musicians or any musician out there. One of the reasons is that you can use it as we're using it right now, which is as a USB interface into Skype or Zoom. You will also be able to use it as a remote field recorder. So even if you're not doing a distance learning lesson, this device will still be useful for recording your concerts, recording lessons, recording your rehearsals, anything like that. So it's a great little device. This interface hooks up over USB micro, so depending on what connections your computer has, whether it's USB-C or A, you might have to get a USB cable that can go from micro to the connections on your computer. Zoom has a wide variety of different devices you can choose. This is their simplest one. It has a simple XY stereo microphone built in, which gets a pretty good natural sound. One of the things I want to show you is that with these USB microphones and these USB interfaces, you can actually now decouple the audio from the video. Uh, if you're just using your built-in camera and you're using the audio from that, you're pretty much stuck where if I try and get away from the video at all, all of a sudden I become way more distant to the microphone. One of the advantages here is that you can get a three to six foot USB cable and place the microphone much closer to me, which allows me to stand further back from the video. This is great for lessons, obviously, because now you can get a full profile. If I'm playing violin or piano or I'm singing or whatever it is, you, the teachers and students can now see each other's full profile in the video frame. One of the other great things about this device is it does have a built-in headphone output. So what that's going to allow me to do is plug my headphones in right here and get audio from Zoom through the headphones. Um, that can help because it means you might not need to have speakers in the room or I might not be, need to do playback out of Zoom into the room. Remember with these devices, what we set in Zoom was that enable original audio. And therefore, there's going to be no echo cancellation. So if I'm using the built-in output of my speakers to play back into the room, whatever my teacher might be saying or whatever my teacher might be playing, that audio is going to come and get back into this microphone feedback to whoever's talking. That can be difficult to deal with and that can make the audio a lot worse. So I do recommend continuing to use headphones when possible, though I do understand that sometimes playing in headphones oftentimes can be really irritating and annoying, especially for classical musicians, classical singers. There's ways around that. You can sometimes just use a single earpiece. Um, it might just take getting some used to. If you really can't use headphones and you really want to avoid it, then I would suggest just keeping your keeping the output of your laptop as quiet as possible um, so that you can still hear what's happening, but you just want to minimize the amount that's feeding back into your microphone. This is also two directional microphones built into this. It's two cardioids. They call it an XY pattern. They're sort of like this, which means that one's pointing left, one's pointing right. 
But the nice thing about that is they don't pick up from behind. So another thing you can do is position the speakers so that they're behind the microphones, and then that way they're gonna get less of the sound from the speakers that you have. So now as you see, I've put the microphone closer to myself, which is gonna make me sound clearer, and it's probably to reduce some of the background noise that you might hear in New York City. Those can help, and that can help reduce feedback from your speakers, but one of the compromises is the fact that by putting the microphone closer, you might get a less natural sound out of the instrument. By putting it this close, you can sometimes accentuate certain parts of the instrument, certain frequencies, things like that. So it's a bit of a compromise and work with your students or work with your teacher to sort of find the best distance where the microphone's getting a natural sound from you, but is also reducing noise and reducing feedback from the speakers. All right, for this last part of the video, I'm going to be going over multi-channel interfaces. This will be the most complicated setup to go over, but it might be useful for those of you who haven't already had an interface and are looking to incorporate a multi-mic setup into your classes over Zoom. Um, the advantages here would be that you could do an entire microphone setup and you could send a mixed stereo bus over Zoom. So you might be able to incorporate room microphones or if you had multiple keyboards or multiple electric instruments and wanted direct inputs from each of those in addition to a talk microphone. I have an RME Fireface UFX and so that's what I'm going to be using during this video but it should work for any interface that you have. So just like the USB microphones and the Zoom recorder, we're going to be going up here to Preferences, and we're going to go to our microphone again, and we're going to click the drop down as we have for all the other devices, and we're going to select our interface. It should now be getting audio from our interface. Now there's been one hiccup that I've had and that colleagues of mine who I've talked to who also own multi-channel interfaces have, some of them, including myself, have had an experience where all of the inputs to your interface are being brought in mono into Zoom. So for me, with my interface, the first eight channels are analog inputs, analog line inputs, and those are all being brought in as eight mono inputs into Zoom, meaning they're all panned center and I can't pan them left and right. This means that I can't make a stereo bus in Zoom. And so even if I had all the microphones in the world, ultimately what I'm sending over Zoom would be mono. I can show you here, if I go into my mix software, that you have four microphones and I have my eight analog inputs up here, and I'm mixing those down to a bus, analog three and four, and no matter how I pan this, I wasn't able to get stereo audio in Zoom. What I found was that Zoom was taking in all eight analog inputs, no matter which bus I mixed to. I got around this by using this software called Loopback, and this is a Mac-only software, and some of you may know it from its precursor called Soundflower. But Loopback is the newer version of this, and it has a lot of great features that make mixing multi-sourced audio into something like a two-channel Zoom program much easier. What Loopback allows me to do is take multiple different inputs, multiple different sources on my computer, and mix them to a stereo bus here, as you can see, channels one and two. And in doing so, what I can do is select these channels in Zoom as the microphone input. What we have here is my interface, Fireface UFX, and it has all of the inputs to that Fireface down to 94. Now I don't need 94 channels, all I really need is two. So what I'm gonna do is just take two bus channels and send those in, and those are gonna be my microphone channels. In this case, what I chose was three and four. So now if I go back to my RME Total Mix software, what you can find is I have input three and four down here. I've set to loop back so that the output of this goes back to the inputs. And now I can mix any of the microphones or any inputs I want to that bus. So if this was a multi-microphone setup, and I also had microphones in these, say a stereo pair, and then a talk mic, and say I had an electric keyboard or an electric bass that I also wanted to include, I could do my mix here to this bus, and that will bring it into zoom here. You notice now what I can do is I can pan left and right. If I move it over to the left, you'll hear it in the left. And if I move this mic over to the right, you'll hear it in the right. Now, one of the other advantages of using this software is that I can route all my other applications to this bus. And so I never have to use computer audio during my Zoom sessions. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom here. you'll find that I have Firefox and Chrome and my iTunes all being sent to this bus as well. And I get volume control in the options section of each of those individually. So I can bring all of those down a little bit with respect to my microphone so that I always talk over those applications. Now, how does this work in Zoom? 
how do I select this bus in Zoom? Well, it's very easy. If I go back to my Zoom settings, and I go to my audio preferences, I'm going to go down again to my microphone. Right now it's on my interface. I can find that loopback device I made, which is right here, Zoom Audio. And I can select on Zoom Audio, and we should see input. And it's now using this bus that we made here. One of the great things about this is because all my computer audio is automatically going to that microphone bus, I can pretty much leave, and I'd want to, original sound on all the time. And now it's going to be very clean. I avoid that voice processing. My iTunes, my Firefox, everything like that will go through. And when I go to share my screen, I no longer have to click share computer sound. In fact, if I want to share audio, I don't even have to share a screen anymore. I can simply open iTunes or any of these devices here that I've routed, and they'll always be sending audio to Zoom. And I can show you right now is that I can hit sources up here, and I can select any application that I want on my computer. So what I might do is add Cubase. So you're working in a DAW like Cubase or Pro Tools, or you're working in using notation software like Sibelius or Finale, and you want to get that through Zoom, you can see I simply added that here as a source. It's sending channels one and two out into Zoom. So now the audio output of this DAW on channels one and two will always be going to Zoom. All right, we've made it to the end of this video. I hope that helps you in your lessons over distance here. One of the last thoughts I want to leave you with is that audio is never a set and forget thing. So even if you get a good setup and you get good equipment, you should always be working with whoever's on the other end, asking, checking with them to make sure that the audio sounds okay on their end. That's something you can do at the beginning of every lesson. You know, a lot of times you can set up the same thing twice, but something changes. You know, it could be the humidity affecting your instrument. It could be that there's more noise outside. It could be any number of factors. So you should always just double check with whoever you're with, whoever you're working with. Make sure that the audio still sounds good at the beginning of every connection. If you need any additional help, feel free to reach out to the MSM DLRA team. I hope that this video helps you in all of your lessons.